Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and I absolutely love it if you could subscribe to my channel by pressing the red button down there. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how I design an award winning research poster. It's really important to remember two things before you start to plan and before you start to design your poster. The first thing is that a poster is meant to be a networking tool. It's meant for you to attract an audience that's walking past, look at your poster and think, mm, I could work with that person, I could collaborate with that person, let me email them and find out more about their method. So essentially it should be a tool that's going to allow you to network and collaborate more in the future. Secondly, it's a communication tool. So you might be standing there and someone walks past and look at your, looks at your poster and it's really important for them to be able to ask you questions and for them to be intrigued. So does your poster attract people to come and speak to you? Essentially, your poster is a visual abstract of your research and of what you have done so far. What is it that you are trying to get across to your audience? What is it that people that are going to walk past take a look at and take away from your This video is going to be split into four different sections and I'll leave this timestamps for it down below. The first section is going to include design and layout. So everything to do with the outline and the design of your actual posters, the physical poster. The second part of this video is going to be to do with accessibility, so font, size, um, subheadings. The third part of the video is going to be about actually setting up your PowerPoint page or any other um, software that you use. And the last section will be about planning to write. Um, so as I said, I will do what to include and what to write about in a whole different video because I think otherwise this video is going to be way too long. Um, I also wanted to say that I do check posters. I do have a poster editing service. So do email me on my email, I'm in a place at gmail.com if you want to know more about my prices and um, my turnaround. So there are three types of people that look at a poster. First type are just the passerbys. They'll probably look at your poster for about three seconds and they'll keep it moving. The second type are people that might hover for a little bit. They see a word or a topic or a method that they're kind of familiar with, so they'll be there for about 30 seconds maybe. But the majority of people that walk past your poster will only really look at your poster for between 3 to 30 seconds. Now this is not a lot of time at all. So if you've bombarded your poster with lots of information, it does make it really hard to take anything away. Bear in mind that poster presentation sessions are usually at the end of the day after all the talks. Usually it's between 4 to 5 p.m. and people have been, you know, people have been listening to research all day. They don't have time and they don't have the energy to read through a dense poster. It's just not possible and it's just not feasible. Um, and it's definitely not going to win you any So the first thing you want to think about is your layout of your poster. So what type of layout are you going to go for? Go for thirds? Do you want to go for maybe the methods in the middle and then images on the other side? It really depends on what kind of research it is that you are trying to communicate. Columns are also quite nice because people know how to navigate them because of newspapers. So we know that we go down and then go to the next column and the next column. So this is quite a nice way to lay things out. Just make sure that you're able to tell your audience which way they need to navigate. If your sections are starting from here and then going here and going down and going that way, then a nice thing that I've seen from award-winning posters is uh, the use of arrows. It helps the reader, it makes it clear, it shows them the direction that you want them to read in and it stops confusion because you don't want them to start from the introduction and end up in the results without actually knowing what method it was you used or what, you know, what your discussion is. Another thing that you need to think about when designing a poster is the colours that you are going to use. Now I tend to think about this very early on so when before I even have any information down I really do think about the colors and I know this is kind of the opposite way that we're taught to think about things usually we're taught to just write get the information down and then you can edit and format things but actually with a post it should be the other way around because you're aiming to um, communicate your information in an attractive way so if you know the colors that you're going to use then you can maybe edit your graphs and maybe match your writing and the rest of the images to those colors to make it more attractive but depending on your, your university there is like a template bank so i know that ucl for example have a template bank that you can download with the ucl header um, and also i think there's a footer as well that says ucl um, and they have about nine or ten different colors i tend to go for the pastel colors but then the award-winning posters that i've seen um, go for more brighter colours. So I've seen yellows and kind of fluorescent colours win awards. What I've seen and what I have learnt from making posters over the past couple of years, kind of bright posters that shout um, and are really loud 
are do much better than those that are kind of quiet and don't really stand out. Second thing that we're going to talk about is accessibility. This includes font. Now font size is a big one. I always get asked about font size and one thing that I was always I used to ask as well was font size because you are printing out something in on A0 size paper so it is really important that things are blown up so people can see them from at least a meter or a meter and a half away. Typically for font size for the title the font size should be about 90. The headline it should be about 60 and then for your body text it should be around 36 to 40. Those are sort of the standard sizes. You can obviously add a bit bigger, make it a bit smaller depending on your information and kind of if you want them to be on one line. But those are the standard sizes that will that will mean that someone a meter, a meter and a half, or even two meters away um, is able to read your writing. Graphics. Now this is a big one. Photos, graphics, images, graphs. How much of it? Um, you probably think that uh, your posters should have more information in terms of actual text. I mean, you actually need to have at least 30, 40, almost 50% of your posters should be graphics. Now that can include a diagram, let's say for example you're showing a pathway of a protein or the way that an inhibitor works, then that can be a nice diagram that's, that's blown up a bit and put into the corner alongside your introduction. Um, or if you're showing your results, it's much better to show a nice graph that's really clear and, and says the information, shows the information um, better than, than text that's really difficult to read. Um, or even if it's your methods, a nice thing that I did was take a photograph of my actual setup and again that allows people to interact with your poster more and actually physically see something different in terms of the method than all the other methods that they've just been reading from all the hundreds of other posters that they've seen. In terms of writing, make sure that you use italics or bold as opposed to underlining. And also make sure that you use a clean and very clear font, so something like Times New Roman, Arial, Sans, Sans Serif, like anything that's very clear. Do not use cursive styles. Although they may look nicer, you might think they're more attractive to look at or to read. It does make it hard for someone to read lots of cursive text from a meter or two meters away. So keep it clean, keep it simple. Um, do not go for those fancy fonts. Just stick to something plain and simple. Do not use caps at all. Do not do it. Do not capitalize your letters. Again, if you want to highlight something, use um, bold or use italics, do not use caps. Again, it does not look nice in the post that's blown up to A0 size. It just looks like it's overdone and it just looks a bit aggressive, actually. In terms of justification, use left justification, that works better. I tended to use um, kind of centre justification, so both sides are clean. I think that works best, but if you do want to justify it to one side, uh, use left. Left is much easier for people to read. So while you're designing your poster, Think about how much negative space you're leaving. Allow people to access your poster through having negative space. Negative space just means empty space that hasn't got any writing in it. So if your poster is A0, leave a little bit of space on the outside that's just blank um, to allow people to kind of have that space that hasn't got any information and a bit of a contrast from the information that you've given them. It just means that you've got a few kind of centimeters around the edges and then around um, and the columns, I would also recommend leaving a few centimetres, not making them super, super close. So that negative space allows people to understand where the different sections are. It also allows people to have a bit of a break when reading. It's not just continuous. All right, moving on to the third aspect that you need to think about when designing a poster is your PowerPoint setting. First thing that you need to do is set up your page size. Now, if you just work from the A4 page size that's there as default and then try to print that out in A0, it just wouldn't work, it's gonna look blown up and it's gonna be horrible. Fix your page size as soon as you open your document. Go to page setup and change the size to A0. Once you've done this, you can now start to design your poster. One thing that I found was you, you never know which position your poster is going to be in. Sometimes I've gone to the conference, the poster position is right at the bottom, which means, again, if it's not eye-catching, no one's going to look down. Or it might be right at the top or might be right in the corner or somewhere that people are just not going to really bother walking or looking. So it's really important that you think about the design of your poster immensely. You've done all of that, you want to actually start to design the poster. So you've opened your PowerPoint by now, you've set your page size to A0, now you want to start to import the different sections into your poster. So this is where you can play about a bit. Do you want to try all thirds? 
get some boxes and stick in some boxes and take a look and see what it would look like. Do you want to do maybe a follow me navigation method with arrows? Try that out, put that there, see how it looks. Try out different methods, try out different layouts and see which one suits you and see which one feels uh, more natural to you to follow. You then want to think about the key things that need to be there before you even think about the writing that's going to go in because that's a whole different section. As I mentioned earlier, your email address must be there, maybe your supervisor's email address, but definitely yours, um, your name, your affiliations, your lab, who sponsored your work. Another thing that you could do that would really help you understand what your poster would look like is just insert random text into your boxes. Don't put in anything relevant, you could just write whatever you want um, but put in some text that is of the right size so you can kind of get a feel of how many words you have to play with for each section and also you might discover that actually it doesn't quite look right the boxes are too close there's not enough space this will allow you to see your design and allow you to pick out the flaws in your design before you actually start to put in your information. Um, so by doing it this way, you allow yourself to plan smarter because in the next section where you start to plan your information, if you know that you only have 100 words to write your, in your introduction, you won't go on and on and on planning um, to write about your whole ba the whole background of your thesis. I really hope that gave you a few helpful tips for designing your poster. Let me know if you have a research poster coming up soon that you need to plan because I know that we put them off until the last minute and then we panic and you know that's not the best way of doing things so get started right now